What's good, YouTube? It's Static here, and I'm here. This is a very special occasion. Very, very special occasion. Uh, who I got in the building right now? Who I got on Discord right now? Hey, 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 Static. It's uh, it's it's Adam. I uh, how you doing, Dalen? What you do? What you, what you do this past weekend? Tell him. Tell him what you did. Uh, all right. I uh, I I, I won a win at at uh, y YCS in Indianapolis. What else you win? What else you win? You uh, want a yeah, box? Nintendo Switch. You want Nintendo a... Switch? Yeah, box and mat. Yeah. Uh, I got I got top sixteen or I got top eight in uh, YCSMB. How do you forget your own top, Brooch? I you know it's it's been a it's been a long weekend. It has been a long weekend, but uh, congrats, bro! I know it's been a long time coming. I know you told me the other day that you day twoed like seven times and you never got a top, but can't say that anymore, right? Yeah, I uh, broke the curse. Thank you so much. It's uh it's all thanks to you and uh, the support of all the other boys and all the testing and all the love and um i'm happy to rep buffalo I, I love that i love to hear it so we got your list up here right now uh so you picked oh, put, that, put that thing away put the thing away you don't need that <laughs> so you picked the pure snake eyes variant so what made you go for this variant as opposed to like the fire king or the melodious or the cash um so i was on the fire king build for a long time it's also what i took to ics rally a month ago uh, I still like a lot, but uh, ultimately I thought that um, having a lot of room for non-engine is just what uh, really would have worked out this format. Um, and just the build that has the most room for non-engine is just the pure build. Mm -hmm. uh, the cash tier cards are cool, but also like it's a little bit like the cash build is slightly better against Rogue, but the pure build is slightly better into like the mirror. And once I, I, I figure once I'd be the later rounds, it would be a lot of snake eyes. So, um, but I, I think they're all like super like similar. So I don't think it's like a huge deal breaker, but I, I went with the pure and it worked out. So like to hear it, love to hear. It. I mean, I think pure is honestly like the best build just because of how much non engine it needs and how like it only needs what a 21 card engine like commitment. And then you can just play that whatever. might be the exact number. Yeah. And then like you would just play like whatever, like fits what whatever's in the room pretty much uh was there a reason behind 42 cards specifically like i know people play 30 43 44 yeah it uh i have been a strong believer in 40 for years and years so it feels really silly the first time i top it's with over 40 <laughs> but um uh so it really just was and this is like a conclusion i came to after just running some numbers on a calculator and talking with like colin and devin mm -hmm. and others um but it really is good to just go a little bit over 40 in the pure build as weird as sounds because the deck is like a one card starter deck sometimes and you have 13 non-popular starters and then the poplars which sometimes get you there um you really do have to draw hands they're like two good engine pieces and like two like non-engine pieces like hopefully at least and like going a little over 40 uh, it decreases your overall consistency of drawing a playable hand by like two percent but it like ups your odds of like seeing the appropriate number of non-engine by like almost like ten percent yeah. so it just the math works better in your favor and this is also the number that worked well with my sighting patterns so uh is 42 the ideal number i don't know uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy says it's the answer to everything it worked out for this uh -huh. all right so obviously we don't got to talk about the engine in the deck because like the engine has been solved for the past like Year what do you now? mean? You don't want to know why I played three Snake Eye Ash? There's some deep <laughs> theory, deep, deep, deep theory. You could have. I feel like I feel like two would have been a more consistent number. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah. um, uh, walk me through your thought process for your non-engine that you wanted to main. Yeah, so it was the uh, three Ash Blossom, the three Valors, the two Mortars, the three Ogres, uh, the Crossouts, the Droplets, and the one uh, Talents, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to say overall, this is a a lot of the hand traps are pretty standard spread, but, um, like, there were some choices made here, like, no Nibiru. Um, Nibiru can be good into Snake Eyes, <laughs> but it's awkward because it's always, like, really sad by itself. And more importantly, it's just really bad against, like, every other deck. It's mm -hmm. not against Tempai, Voiceless, Labyrinth, um, etc. Um, so instead, I went for a card like Droplet. Which, um, Droplet was insane. Uh, I would have loved to see in every single hand all weekend. Um, what's great, uh, people love to just, like, use their Valors, Mourners, Imperms, everything on, like, uh, Ash and Diabell and everything. You can chain that to dodge around and get good value. Um, you're able to send, like, Flamber to the graveyard, jump scare them with two Pyros. Um, 
And Droplet's just good at every matchup. It stops like the Apollos against uh, the Apollos and the IP against Snake Eye. Mm-hmm. It gets around the non-targeting protection of Voiceless. It's fine against the Labyrinth Ladies. It's good against Tempai and Battle Phase. It stops like the Century on Branded Locks. So I think Droplet's just like almost good in every situation. So I thought like why not run it? Um, but then there's still enough hand traps in here. On uh, the imperms I didn't mention, of course, um, where you do often draw two of them, and they pair well together. Mm-hmm. I, I I wasn't a big believer in ogre earlier in the format because uh, it's it, it is rough in some rogue matchups, but it's good against ten pi. It's actually really solid in the snake eye mirror because uh, you get the apollos of the IP, the temple, the charmers. Um, it just has a ton of utility. Uh, so ogre is actually really solid. Uh, the other hand traps they're just all good across the board. Uh, and then cross out. You could do. There are certain like parts that are funny to cross out, but uh, really it just gives you like that uh, extra pushing power. So uh, I, I was happy with the non-engine choices. Uh, I thought mortar is the only one at two between all the hand traps, just because I thought it was the it had the least utility out of all of them, and you're already running like all the valors and imperms. But uh, mm-hmm. and then obviously the one talents for cross out and for the thrusts inside deck. Uh, talents is an insane card. You could run more. Uh, but like inside of games, I'm kind of already running four of it. So uh, the one talent's got a lot of utility. So I I was happy with the map engine. Okay, so I'm about to say like I have a couple of questions or like a couple like uh yeah things just to talk about. Uh, so you chose the two moonlit. Now I feel as if like as like everything you said about moonlit is correct. I feel as if because moonlit is better in the snake eye uh matchup, and because snake eyes is like the best deck in the room. I feel as if like you could have done the three moonlit and the two ogre. Was there ever a point uh during the weekend when you felt like you missed the third moonlit or you're like, uh the snow rabbit could just be a moonlit, I'd be better off for it. That's a good question. And um I would say no. I was pretty happy with the ghost ogres. Um like they were I think Ghost Ogre is still the better one into the Snake Eye Mirror because it's it's good to have something that actually removes rather than just destroys. Um, or I'm sorry, rather than just negates. Yeah. And like Mortar, it doesn't even it's the only one between that Valor and Imperm that doesn't give you the option to hit like the normal summon Ash. Okay. Um so like sometimes it's just like okay. But Ogre, uh, you could also hit like the Charmers to remove them from like three link materials. Um Ogre was like way better in the matchups like a horse stun deck I played. Where like it was huge to be able to like ogre like a king of Sark. Um but also importantly, uh post side for the mirror match. Uh so the side deck is three bells, curry kara, three thrusts, three cosmic, uh two lightning storms, duster, and then the debear and anti spell. Mm-hmm. Uh into the mirror, I would actually in a side of game side out almost all the hand traps and put in all board. Um so I would side out the three ash, three valor, two mourner. Uh, and the three crossouts for all the spells in the side deck and one bell. And the difference between really? Warner and Ogre there is that Ogre plays nice as a six card in the end board mm-hmm. because it it can hit Apollosa or IP or Temple, whereas like Mortar can't. So that was like one difference between the two uh, in the mirror. Uh, Mortar's cool, but I, I I did really like the utility of Ogre more, uh, except in a specific like rogue matchups. Okay, so pretty much, so you just said like when you're going second against the Snake Eye Mirror, you take you take out all the hand traps instead of Imperm, right? Yep, instead of Imperm Ogre, and uh, just because of the, how the numbers work, I leave in one Bell because even going second, at least like you could Bell like a Promethean Princess or like a Flamberge to cut them off of like some recursion. So like with this uh, side, but... deck, so, so with, I'm sorry. So like with this side decking pattern, like does this help you like dodge stuff like? your opponent's talents and cross out i'm assuming is that why you just take out the hand traps yeah uh exactly so that's one big reason um because most of the mirror match is on like when they're going first they'll be on cross outs talents and skill drains against you mm-hmm. uh, which skill drain is a card i can slot in my side but it's definitely a card i was uh like worried about the whole weekend uh that's the main reason i went on like the lightning storms uh because i want a way just to like clear out the back row and just be able to play through the mirror uh because ultimately like if they full combo in the mirror match, it's just going to be Apollo's IP, the Princess of the Harbinger, and those are good cards, but especially when you're drawing things like Lightning Storm Droplet, like, the board's, like, far from, like, unbreakable. And okay. then you're really just worried about, like, what other hand traps and non engine they have to go with it. Uh, so, it, I, I did like the board breaker approach. Um, 
especially like my like round five snake eye matchup it was just great when i was able to just go ham second twice um and like uh it didn't really work out round seven when i lost the snake eye mirror match uh obviously i didn't really draw them in the top eight mm-hmm. uh, but I, I i did like the board breaking approach going second uh in the mirror so i it, it's it's debatable because sometimes you do just want like to have the room to win the hand trap war but the hand traps are like unreliable Whereas, like, you always, like, know what a board breaker is about to do, so. Was, uh, did you, was this, uh, side decking approach, was this only for Snake Eyes, or did you do this for, uh, other matchups? Um, good question, and it would depend. So, um, like, Tenpai, uh, you always, like, side in if, as if you're gonna go first anyway. Because mm-hmm. if Tenpai goes first, you either win, or they, like, shift or heat wave you and you have to go first anyway. Yeah. So that's why, like, the thrusts and the d were huge. Uh, the Lightning Storms of the Duster are great into, like, Labyrinth going second. Um, the Droplets and, like, the Cosmics are really good into, like, Voiceless. Um, there are obviously some matchups like Centurion and Branded where you, you, you can't risk it. Like, you keep in Droplet, uh, but you have to just try to hand trap them out of it. Mm-hmm. And, like, against Centurion one game, I, like, Valor and Impermed him, and it didn't even matter. I still got Calamity locked. Um, so, there are some matchups where you can... Uh, it, it was also like good to have these like versus like the stun matchups, which I played one of each, like one runic, one Horus. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as cool as Jeremiah's stun, but uh, they they were decks of the room. Shout out to Jeremiah's. Um, Jeremiah's. so I was last thing about the main. I wanted to talk about the droplet real quick. So I've heard, and like I kind of get the sentiment, where it's like it's kind of weird to play a boatload of hand traps with the droplet because you're going to deplete your hand way faster than you normally should. However, I feel like it can work just because like you're on like one card starters and you play like 13, 17 of them. So was there ever a moment this weekend where the droplet conflicted with hand traps for you or like you just didn't have a hand and then you lost a game because you lost a one hand trap? Uh, great question. Um, I think the only time I'd ever really be afraid of like losing advantage on the droplet is like, when I'm going first, and like you set it, and when you're going first setting droplet, it's kind of just worse than imper most of the time. Mm-hmm. So there are times, like in the Snake Eye Mirror, I'll usually side out the droplets going first, and side in like the bells, just because I'd rather have a hand trap than like plays around like if the opponent's also on like a board breaker back row wipe approach. Um, but other than that, I droplet is fine. In fact, I go as far as to say like I'd want it in almost every single hand. Uh-huh. Um, because once you start playing, um, you should just always have or wanted, and just be able to chain it right away. Uh, if you already have like an Ash or a DBL on board, they're trying to get that. You chain a droplet, you dodge, and you get the free value. Yeah. Uh, you draw cursed cards like Flamberge in your hand all the time. That's a way to get out of graveyard. There's a time this weekend where, and this might have been against Wiz, where I like droplet pitched a Flamberge out of hand, negated the Typhon. And then the type was negated, so I was able to use the flamber in graveyard. Um, so it, there are times where you're like, I wish I had two hand traps together. But even when you draw one hand trap and droplet, droplet by itself has the strength of like two to three hand traps. Yeah. And the other hand traps should weaken their board a little bit. So I just honestly, droplet's always insane. It's probably my favorite non engine choice for this deck. In most scenarios, in most matchups, it's just really strong. From the stun matchups to the combo matchups, it's just always great. Um, like, going first, you sometimes, it's not wonderful when you set it, because then you're going to, like, have to worry about what cards you have to pitch. Yeah. But yeah. going second all the time, it's just free value. Uh, would you ever, con- like, so would you, uh, deck building this format, this format. would you uh, would ever you not play Droplet? Like, would you feel like Droplet is, like, too mandatory to play in every main? I I think that probably depends on the deck, but I like a lot. Um, once again, I think by itself it breaks most of these Snake Eye on board. Mm-hmm. The, the most awkward thing is like when they have the IP stuck in the back row and you still have to deal with that separately. Um, but then like it works against Ten Pie because you could use in the battle phase, and then um, sometimes you even just get them to crash the body because they try to like swing over one of your guys, you shrink their guy, and like that it no longer is like the battle immunity. Yeah, uh, it stops the big. Voice the Skull Guardian. Uh, it's kind of just okay against Labyrinth, uh, but it stops the Sun decks. Uh, it's good against Cash if they don't shift to you. 
it's uh it stops it very importantly stops like branded and like centurion from like ftking you um it's even good as like pearly they're gonna detach two off noir then it's affected then you can chain droplet um so i think across the board i just i just love it this format i think is really good for droplet fair enough fair enough fair. all right let me um going into the extra deck i mean the extra deck looks as could he as, could he as it could be um oh, yeah. i guess the only things to talk about is buko and typhon now these yep. normally aren't seen in the extra deck, and deck I've, I've seen people like side deck the fuko just because like there's no room in the extra how did you find room for the fuko in the extra uh so yeah the everything's super regular other than like the typhon the fuko and i think many people are already on the typhon and i want to say typhon maybe bailed me out of one game the entire tournament so it it, it did job. Mm -hmm. um before the fuko other considerations were like a second anima or nightmare cerberus i was on for a while uh there's like pit night early that wasn't really coming up enough um but ultimately i like the fuko um and like some people are side decking it but i think there's also the case where like if tenpai wins the dive all right mm -hmm. they're gonna make you go first uh and then you have that information you know you're playing against tenpai so this is a card I don't want in my side deck. It's something I want already in my extra deck. And it's not just for Tempai, it's also for like the shifter deck. Where we're like without Fuko, like the best play you typically have is like normal Ash, get popular, go in a, a search temple, go in an IP, activate the temple, and then like make one IP summon the opponent's turn. Yeah. A lot of times it's also just not enough. Uh so Fuko guarantees that you live. Uh I was really surprised. I only played against one Tenpai the entire tournament round two. Uh, and there's only one in top 32. I was expecting way more Tenpai. Yeah. Like, the way, like, but, the, like the way the VODs were going, the way, like, the streams were setting up, it seemed like there was a lot of Tenpai in the room. I think, like, Tenpai was probably the second representative, but I think it just got... That would make sense to me. I dodged a lot of it. Yeah. But then uh, the one Tenpai I did play against, I lost die roll. He made me go first. Uh, so I had the option to make the Fuko then and there, but my hand was very strong, plus I had, like, two good hand traps against Tenpai. Uh, so I just went and made most of a board anyway. And I had enough points of interaction that I was able to speed him. But then game two, against Tenpai, my hand was weaker. And his hand traps were better. So I did make the Fuko against him. He couldn't do anything, and I beat him on the frag back. So Fuko was also like really important to have for, like one game against Tenpai. Okay, so, uh, so I like it. I would definitely run it again. And I liked it over the Lear Lusk. Uh, I think Devin had a good point where like Lear Lusk could buy you two turns, whereas Fuko could buy you one. But, like, the Leerless boost is to Droplet, which is a real card, and the Fuko loses to, like, what, like, Kaijus, which nobody's actually playing. Yeah. So, Fuko, you only really make in this deck going first if you have a, a weak hand, but if you have, like, a strong hand, do you just do the regular combo? Usually, yes. And, uh, in fact, you could also just do the strong combo. Like, you would still on, like, an Apple IP, but then also, instead of, like, a Harbinger or the Promethean, you could also just still end on the Fuko. So even if they break through all your stuff and can attack through your first two monsters, they're still not getting through Little Bird. You just show them the bird. That is it. That's actually really um, nice. So yeah, yeah, Fuga was good. Uh, I didn't get to use too much this weekend, but it's also got yeah, that utility against the shifter decks like Cash Flu or Vanquish Soul. Uh, so and there were there were a few Vanquish Souls floating around plot, top tables. Right. Um, but uh, Fuga was good. I really appreciate that used as my extra deck slot. Both Fuko and Typhon bailed me out of like one game each this weekend. That's what they need to do. So, would you? Is there ever a world where you take out the Typhon for another card, or you think Typhon? It just has to be Typhon in the slot. I don't think it has to be Typhon, but I don't think there's anything I would have rather played. I think my current sixteenth card was a Nightmare Cerberus because I find a lot of situations where I'm trying to break a board, and like I don't want to SP them because then I can't kill them. I don't have enough to go for access code. But you do have enough to go for Cerberus to uh, discard, force a card out. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you, you know, Dalen, how much I love Nightmare Cerberus and popping cards are totally <laughs> awesome. Um, but uh, it was coming up a few times in testing, but not more than like Fucho and Typhon. So th there was no card I would have rather played over them. Okay, that's fair. Um, also, I actually, I just noticed I was thinking like of other slots for this, and I, my mind went Pack Pit. Um, I'm assuming you tested out the, the, um, the Synchron variant, even though we lost Baron and Savage for like Pack Pit or the um the Dispatter Omega. Did you ever like test those uh those combos out? Yeah, so I didn't spend too long on it, but after the 
ban list dropped. I uh, I was playing the Jet Synchron. I was playing the build a little bit. I think Jet Synchron can be a little bit better to draw than Snake ID Bell Star. And it's like gives you a little bit more utility with the original. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, I just thought the Synchro combo was a lot weaker than like the, uh, the new like Hope Harbinger combo. Um, and like it would like rip a lot of your own hand of edge because you have to like discard off a of Jet Synchron stuff. Yeah. Um, it it was like okay, but I think like most people have pivoted to this, and I think Snake ID Bell Star is just uh, even though it's sad to draw, it's a really good card in the deck because it makes Temple better, which makes Poplar better. Um, if you open D Bell Star and wanted, it gives you a better line. Um, it gives you battle phase utility. Like you can stick this in the battle phase against like Tenpai or against like Labyrinth or like Ubel who are trying to like summon things in the battle phase against you. Um, it gives you that rank eight. It's a big guy. Um, the Snake ID Bell Star actually gives you a ton of utility in the deck, uh, so I'm glad I went with that. I would say most players are probably on this in the pure build, yeah. and even in the cash tier build, most lists I saw around the venue were still playing the Snake ID Bell Star. And like, I, I never cited it. It always stays in going second just so you have another body to push with. So, uh, I, I did test the Synchro build briefly, but I, I like this one better. And I think at the end of the day, you're only gonna full combo with either this or the Synchro build so much, and this card just gives you way more utility. Yeah, because like it's just better to have this in the deck than just a random level one tuner. Yeah, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> right. All right. So let me go to the side deck real quick. So let's yeah, uh, the the curry card was lit. <laughs> Did it actually come up? Uh, twice. Yeah, I uh. So the curry car, like I said, sometimes I sign the board breakers. Curry car would often go in going second. Uh, for a long time, that was not a curry car. That was a snake eye birch. Uh, because going second, yeah. So going second, you sometimes just need one more body to make a good push. And it like you can search Birch off of like Ash or Bonfire. And sometimes your opponents remove like interruptions are more removal based. So you're resolving your cards, they're just trying to pop them all. I um, mean, you would usually get to like a Birch. But like going second, uh, Curry Kara is usually just better than Birch. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't Bonfire it, but you can still Ash it or Heat it. That's how I searched it twice this weekend when I used it. Um, I don't think I hard drew it at all, but I Ash searched it once, and I uh, the opponent Prometheaned my Hita once, and I was able to search it there. And uh, I used it against a big Snake Eye board, and I used it against a, like a Centurion board uh, th- that obviously didn't include Calamities to be able to like make game, and like it was cool. It came in clutch like twice, and uh, Alan helped put me on this, so uh, that was good. Oh, nice. Okay, so um. How was Bell for you? Now, why why Bell over something like Bestial since they're a lot more popular, or maybe even like DD Crow just for more um versatility? Yeah, so uh, I actually almost mained Bell for a while because I really like what it does across the board across matchups. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it really only shines in the labyrinth, voiceless, branded, and melodious matchups, which I played one of each. Um, I think DD Crow, the only matchup Crow is better against is Pearly. Um, and Bestials, I think they also have like less utility, like they're way worse, like against like Labyrinth. Um, but even though Bestials, it's cool they give you the body. Uh, they also conflict with like the lightning storms and things I was running. Okay. Uh, and like when I was trying to go first, I wanted well, to just keep hand traps in hand. Uh, I just like Bell better, especially for like decks like Labyrinth. Uh, that being said, uh, Bell was phenomenal for me in testing. I don't think I used it a single time this weekend. <laughs> I drew it as like a card number six against Labyrinth. Game three, but I didn't need it. The rest of my hand was just good enough. Uh, I cited it in every time. I just wasn't drawing it. Uh, so Bell was wonderful and testing. I don't even think I actually used it once during the tournament. But I, I would still stick with it again over like pros or best deals. Okay, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, like you can't best deal an Ostinato. You can't best deal a big welcome. So. Right. Um, so for your spell trap removal, you want to go with six spell trap removals. Uh, do you feel like that was enough, or do you feel like that wasn't enough? Do you feel like you could have gone less than the three cosmic, two lightning, and harpies, or was this like the perfect ratio? I was happy with this, and it wasn't like even just for like the back row decks, right? Because like cosmic hitting sang and summoning is really good, mm-hmm. like lightning storm hitting like the skill drains uh, against the snake eye mirror and decks like labyrinth and ubel are good. Uh, but then together, you also just have them for matchups like Runix Stun and like Horus Stun, which I played one each. Uh, so I was happy with these. They went in a ton. 
I lightning stormed a few times. I feather dusted a few times. Uh, like I said, in the feather duster against branded, uh, just because like, like you know, it's better than coming in something like cross out going second. Uh, yeah, and, and it worked out because it was able to hit like super poly, like Brandon lost. Um, so they were good. I was happy with all those. Okay. Um, and I think lastly for the side deck, what I'm realizing is there is a lack of a floodgate of choice. No skill drain, no deck lockdown. Um, what was the reason behind not getting free wins going first? What do you mean? I got the anti-spell fragrance. <laughs> Did you see it right there? Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that is a good point. And it's uh, something I just didn't feel, feel like I had room for in my side deck. Uh, obviously, skill drain is very good and often just gives you a free win. Um, but ultimately, my quote-unquote going first floodgates were the three thrusts and the D barrier. Um, even though it's not good in a snake eye, I considered running like a karma can and go with a thrust, but I didn't think it was reliable enough. Mm -hmm. um, even though it's not good for the mirror match, I liked the thrusts and the D barriers way better than a rogue. Uh, so like against Tenpai, it's like it was a lot better going both first and second against them, having the thrust and D barrier. Um, of course, against like voiceless. You can be able to use this for Ritual against Branded for Fusion, um, for Pearly for Xyz, uh, what else? For, like, obviously any deck that's really susceptible with D-Barrier, you still have, like, the four auto-win Floodgates going first, and in D-Barrier's case, it doesn't even lose to back removal. Uh, but then also, because I'm running Thrusts over Skill Drains, I was able to put more going second cards into my side deck, because uh, obviously you never side in Skill Drain going second, really. Yeah. But Thrust is really good going second and gives you, like, three more copies of Talents or, like, a Bonfire one for one if need be. Um, so I lost out on the going first utility, but I gained going second utility, and ultimately uh, I, I wasn't so worried about my deck going first as I was at going second. Uh, so I, th that is why I prioritize, like, the Thrust over, like, Skill Drains or Deck Lockdowns. No, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, for the Snake Eyes matchup, what would you, um, what was your side decking pattern, like, saying, like, you're going up against the Mirror, and you know you're going first because, like you said, like you don't have a strong going first card like Skill Drain for the Snake Eyes mirrors, but also Thrust and D Bear doesn't really do much against them. Uh, yep. So very simply, I would side out three droplets for three bells going first. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, if they have like a big like board wipe card, uh, I don't have to worry about it because everything's in my hand. Um, and bells feel good because it stops the charmers, flamberges. Um, I want to say a lot of builds were on cross out, but if they're not, uh, me being on cross out gives me an edge going first. Because uh, obviously for other decks, cross out just stops hand traps. But the mirror match, uh, if you really don't care about the opponent like hand trapping at a certain point, you can kind of just hold the cross out. It's like better than a solemn strike. Right. So just having the cross out in the main deck already is a great card for going first. And then the bells over the droplets, I feel like just increase my odds a little bit. So I don't have a lot of auto win buttons for the mirror going first, but I did think that like I should still just have an advantage going first. Um, but I also had more side deck slots for like row matchups and for going second. So I I was fine. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense. I feel like in this format in general, your main focus should be I should be able to beat the snake eye matchup going first or going second easy enough, and then just focus everything on non engine. I mean not on engine. Focus everything on everything that's not snake eyes. Just because, like, again, like, we're in a Snake Eyes format. We have to be able to beat Snake Eyes. So that should be priority number one. And then everything else should just be used for um, Rogue matchups, the Voiceless Voice, the Tempi. Because, like, again, like, we should be building decks to naturally beat Snake Eyes. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, y you hit the nail on the head. And, like, even though I play a lot of Snake Eye in later rounds, in, like, day one, I played against almost every other, like, deck i was expecting in the room mm -hmm. uh, i also lied it, it was not three droplet for three bell it was three droplet for two bell and an anti spell because there was uh... like yeah so i think i saw anti spell once uh round nine my opponent hand trapped me out of a good play but then i anti spelled him and i won uh so anti spell won me one game in the mirror match and uh, it was funny that's great uh i don't know if i don't think i asked this uh do you side out the second flame burge going second um it depends on the matchup uh, for a lot of times, yes, because it is just a brick. Um, so in the faster matchups against like your Centurions, Brandeds, uh, the Salmangrate of TK I played against, uh, all sorts of decks like that, 
Uh, the second Flamberge goes out because you're not going to get to it anyway. Mm -hmm. But for like the stun matchups, for like the mirror match, for a lot of like labyrinth type matchups, uh, Flamberge stays in just because I want to be able to like make my engine more lucrative and keep playing the game longer. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that is everything covered except for your matchup. So walk, so walk me through day one and day two. Yeah, I. Uh, so somehow, uh, day one, I played against nine rounds of Yosenju, and it worked out for me. You should know that matchup. <laughs> comma two, comma one, comma three. Right. Uh, so round one was Runic Stun. Uh, I win die roll. I don't know what I'm playing against. I get to full combo. Uh, the Harbinger, the Promethean, the IP, the Apollosa all set up. But then he, because truly I was meant to lose to Rocky Boys all weekend, he uh, normal summons Amino. And starts piecing apart my board. Uh, and then, like, I still have some cards, but he got rid of most of it. And then on my turn, he flips up the famous Eldritch combo of Rivalry Skill Drain. Uh. So, uh, yeah, I'm left with, like, a Flamberge I get to poke with. Next turn, he gets rid of that. I, I Weenie Hut Jr. him with, like, three different Pyros. He then puts a thing with 2,000 defense on the board. Mm -hmm. I uh, I tribute set a Diabell Star. And then the next turn, I uh, Broplet get rid of a Pyro. Just to get it off the board and reduce his not reduce his, you know, attack of his defense monster. Uh, I flip out the Diabell Star and I summon a Snake Eye Diabell Star just to poke for game. So uh, th that game was funny. Uh, game two, I the plan was to basically infinitely pass uh, until I saw impermanence like Lightning Storm. Uh, however, I was dark bribed three times. So uh, <laughs> I tried but didn't succeed game two. And then game three, I had my opponent go first, which is a little bit risky in the Stun Mirror. What the Stun Mirror? Stun Match. Uh, yeah. But ultimately, there was only a little bit of time left. And um, I, it doesn't matter if he can like stop some of my plays as long as I can just get in for a few hits, mm -hmm. uh, which is what happened. So I won round one. Uh, round two, which was the Tenpai matchup I already explained. Uh, I just had enough points of interaction the one game. And I had Fucho the other game. Uh, one game against the Tenpai guy, I... Uh, I IP Link Away Flamberge on his turn, and then uh, he chains Call By, and I'm like, oh no, he's about to get my Flamberge, and then he targets Oak, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine, summon Ash and Poplar. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Call By for Oak. <laughs> so uh, we, we take those. We take right. Those. Round three was Labyrinth, uh, but that's a little bit deceitful, because uh, game one, it was uh, more like Goki Gumbler. Uh, Luke came back for one game. Uh, what? He, he hand, so he hand rips me with Lovely on his first turn, sets up like furniture. He rips a Flamberge out of my hand. Uh, and then on my turn, uh, I draw a cross out for turn. My hand is uh, Snake Eye Ash, cross out, cross out, droplet, droplet. He hand rips me for one at the start of my turn. I shuffle my hand. We roll a die. I say a little prayer to the sky, but we both know how my luck goes, so uh, that Snake Eye Ash did not last my hand. Yeah. So uh, so game one was a quick scoop against the Labyrinth, uh, but then game two, I just... Uh, I'm glad I was able to test with Labyrinth against players like Partho and Wiz, uh, because like I know like Apollosa is actually like super valuable in the Labyrinth matchup. Yeah. Uh, I was able to set up a board. He tried to play a little bit on my turn, but I removed his cards. I just set up Apollo's IP, two good cards for him, like he couldn't deal with it. And then game three, um, I think I asked his like big welcome. He tried to fire off the first turn, and then I like lightning stormed his skill drain and forced out his other back row, and I was able to just pop off from there. Mm -hmm. uh, round four, I won the die roll against Centurion, and uh, boy, I didn't win every die roll this weekend, but I'm very glad I won, won the die rolls against uh, Centurion Branded and uh, Sal Mangry FTK. <laughs> The auto uh, game when I win, yeah. Game when I win, game two, he calamities me through a valor and an imperm, uh, and then game three, I go first, and we have a little bit back and forth, but I get it. Um, round five was my first snake eye mirror. Super nice player, super nice guy. I opened, racked. Uh, like game one, I was able, like he full comboed. He had a, he had full combo plus imperm more and valor, but mm -hmm. I played through all of it because of drop. Uh, like, Droplet helped me, like, dodge, I think, at least one of the two of them between, like, Valor and Imperm. Yeah. Negate his stuff. I challenged his Apollosa to force something else, and I was just able to... My hand was insane. 
Uh, and then game two uh, was where, like, Curry Kara came clutch. I was able to search it and, like, tribute over a lot of his board and push him for game. Um, so that was 2 0. Round six was. Uh, that was Wiz. Uh, they, they, they just. Konami hates to see Buffalo succeeding. So they, they had to pair Wiz against that's, me. That's unfortunate, but that sounds about Konami. Yeah, and then uh, I get die roll. I win game one. He wins game two. I win game three. He was on uh, high, game right? two. His onboard was really good. It was like I had like one ash, but it was enough to stop him. He ends on like the the Sorvis, the the trap pop, the Omni negate, the pendulum graph. He, he it was it was really good. For, like, Wait, he played voiceless. Game. Yeah, but no. it was on lab. Uh he had a thirty eight hour live stream grinding the deck, and he got really good with it really quick, and he switched. So he was on voiceless. Fair. Yeah. And he was my only voiceless matchup. <clears throat> Fair. All right. Which uh which is also why I'm like I, I wide whiz in my testing circle, and then of course uh he, he was my <laughs> only voiceless matchup. <laughs> yeah. So I knew like, I knew he was on like the pendulum graph and stuff, but yeah. His board okay. was really good. Shout to Wiz. It was uh I, I was really bummed when I found it he lost like the other two matches like right after me because he started like five oh. Oh yeah, that sucks. Yeah, and then round seven was I got folded by the mirror match. Uh, I went second, couldn't break his end board, and then uh, game two, he did what I've been doing to other people. He droplet dusted me. So, uh, so I mean, I mean, it wouldn't matter if I had something like skilled rain there anyway, right? Uh, yeah, really. So I, I I got folded by my own technique. <laughs> uh, round seven, round eight was horse done, and game one against Horus was I think like my only like real like bad brick the entire weekend i had like two ogres and ash and two flambers in hand so game one was like pretty unwinnable yeah i, I and then i got like numeron dragon otk that's like i like i ogred like a king sark i asked something else and then i got numeron dragon otk wait did he hard make the 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 dragon into the thing what no he made a rank eight he made for like dragon lubion he did the master duel combo with like Dragon, uh, Lydia, and Lydia, Dragon Big Man Poke. And so then, uh, yeah, uh, game two, I go first with an actually good hand and I win. And game three, I'm able to like Lightning Storm him and get in deep. So, and then uh, round nine was another Snake Eye matchup. And I think I get this one 2 1. I think I lose die roll. Uh, oh, wait. I may have gotten this 2 uh, 0. I play through his board. And then game two is when I flipped up the ants as well, so. Okay. Uh, yep, and then uh, day two, uh, round 10, I play against the Sal Mangrate FTK guy, the 60 card Sal Mangrate Snake Eye Charmer FTK, uh, which I saw this guy at Top Tables cooking at the end of day one. Yeah. So I went on, I went on DB Grinder's channel to find this guy's deck and learn the combo overnight, and sure enough, I played against him first round of day two. You're lying. Um, You're lying. Yep. Nope. 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 I had a feeling. <laughs> so, uh, so game one, thankfully, I go first. I have an insane on board that he's not able to push through. Uh, game two, he FTKs me through three hand traps. Three. Uh, three, I get FTKed. Like he did the so, like um, he did the charmer thing, and then to get the trap card. Yeah, yeah. So he started off with the snake eye plays, and if those all succeed, he's able to like apoloza you before he does like all the sale mangrate plays. Uh, I I think he got top thirty two and has a combo on YouTube. Um, but yeah, like I could let a snake eye stuff evolve. So, like I, I ogre his snake eye ash. Yeah. Um, I ash his original sinful spoil. I still have a mourner in hand. Um, he's then he then like wanna draws. He starts popping off with, like, sign up mining and the salad stuff. Mm -hmm. I try to mourner his Mirage Stallio. His Wanda drew him a cross out. He cross outs my mourner, and then I get FTK'd. <laughs> he goes in the Raging Phoenix. He relinks it. He gets Will of Salamangre. He goes Pyro Phoenix. I get burned for 28. Yep. He summons back the four off the Will. Yep. I, I get FTK'd. Yep. Three hand traps. I was like, I had three hand traps, Ash Bonfire in my hand. I was like, we're lit. We got it. That uh so, wild. so that was tough. I don't know if I could use my hand traps a little bit differently, but then I like if I wait too long, I would have gotten that blows it. So I, I don't yeah, know. Honestly, that, that dude was super nice. His deck was super clean. It was fire, uh, literally. Eighteen and then game going, three. Eighteen going second cards. By the way, I looked at his list this morning. It was sixty card, eighteen going second cards. Yeah, well, probably I, it's not like most of them were hand traps, right? No, no. Oh, really? Uh, I think it was um, 
I want to say there was three. Ta there was a combination of talents and droplets. So it was only really like last cards, 14 or 13 actual hand traps. And the rest was just going second cards and cross outs. Uh, yeah, that, that guy was super nice. I think he had one of the coolest decks of top tables. And then, yeah. Uh, game three, I go first and I'm just able to like lock it up. But like that, that guy's deck was scary. Um, and then round 10 is 11. also just snake eye, which I win to one. Uh, I don't remember that match that well, but it, it, the Snake Eye Mirror match. Um, Were all of your um Snake Eye matchups pure? Yeah. Okay. Um, my round nine opponent from day one was on the Cash Tira cards. Mm -hmm. He told me after the match he showed me, but he didn't draw them at all. So essentially, they were all pure. But technically, okay. I played against one on Cash Tira. Okay. Uh, fair question. Because I think by the end of the event, I played against, what, Snake Eye matchups around 5, 7, 9, 11, and then also, like, the Sal Mangrate Snake Eye guy and Cam Neal. So, yeah. I, what, I think I played against... Like, 6 Snake Eyes? Yeah, like, 5, 6 Snake Eyes total. And then, like, one of everything else. One Horus Stun, Runic Stun, Centurion Branded, Melodious, Voiceless, Labyrinth. Like, all the other decks, like, that were to be expected. Well, you played uh, and then top what, 32. You played melodious? Yep, that was my top 32 written feature. Oh, okay. Yep, I lose die roll, <laughs> but I like weaken his board a lot with a valor and an imperm, so he's not able to make the flower you tell. You can't really hold the imperm for that end board because it's all untargetable. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Cause for being able to give me the melodious testing. Uh, and, and the quarterlings, which uh, of course gave me the power for this event. So, uh, Got that right. Yeah. So then I had Valor, Imperm, Droplet, and cards in my hand. So like he ends on like the triple DD Crow and the Aria. But I've got Droplet, which I hold to play through like his Imperm, which I suspected he had set. Uh so I'm able to like dodge through his Imperm and negate his like DD Crow. Uh and I uh I get over his link, I get over his I don't kill him, I get over his link, I get over his uh fusion. I leave one card on board, uh, because then he can't play his Ostinat or first movement solo, which he'd have in hand. Uh, mm -hmm. we go back and forth a few turns. Like, I leave a Typhon on board against him, and then eventually I just start popping off and I get it, and then game two, he just wrecked, so. That was Melodious, and then round top 16 was against uh, 60 card Branded, which I win die roll, I have an insane end board against him. I, like, I think I think maybe I got Bestial once, but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, I end on, like, Apollosa IP, I have a set cross out, which ends up cross outing his Forbidden Droplet, which is great. Uh, I also have an Ash Blossom in hand that I didn't even have to use. How did you How did um, you manage to cross out a Droplet? Uh, the Droplet pitched two monsters. It, it was like Droplet pitched like Quem and like uh, Puppet. So I just I just had way too much from game one. Yeah. And then <laughs> game two, the only I you know you like you put in the bells. I keep in max hand traps and the Droplets. Yeah. Um, I had a few other cards like. Feather Duster in because like Cross Out wasn't gonna be doing anything like he was going second or like the Flamberge. Um I over his Quem. Uh he ends on so like a bunch of several like branded monsters in like back row. Uh I start my turn, I get to main phase one. I feather duster his back row. Uh he chains a super poly uh just to like set up a Draco's Tapalia for me. Mm -hmm. Uh but I'm able to get rid of his fusion dupe, super poly, and brand lost. Uh I have a droplet for his like last Draco's Tapalia. Uh, which was, you know, which would have lined up with like an Albion, presumably. But yeah. then it will just play on three game two. So I, I get top 16. And then... and then top eight is where I lost against Cam Neal. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost die roll. I only, I had a Valor and like just engine. So I had to try like Valor pretty early against him. He was able to play through it. He sets up like the IP Promethean Napoloza. has some hand traps. I, I try by and I will play through it. Mm -hmm. uh, game two... Uh, he's, I, I set up Apollosa and then he starts hand trapping me. He's like, Bestials bells me about like, I figure it's the baits because he's, he's doing another Apollosa. So I let it go. Yeah. Cause like, I'm still playing anyway. I talents look at his hand. It's like a snake eye ash, a ghost over in like a flamberge or something. So, you know, the ash goes away. Oh, so he really um, was just waited for you to use the oppo. Yep. To ogre it. I, yep. I was afraid of Nibiru, but it was, it was an ogre. So I would have lost the Apollosa. If I could. Yeah. So I get game two. And then game three, my hand is Snake Eye Ash, Bonfire, the Bell Star, but then both Poplars, which was real. Uh, however, I can only complain so much because he also opened bad. 
His opening hand ended up being not by news of the time. Uh, Temple cross out Imperm, Nibiru, and Mourner. Mm-hmm. So he Temple sets two and passes. I draw Cosmic. And then I have to choose between Cosmic and his Temple or like one of its back rows. Um, I normal summon the Ash to try to bait out like an Imperm. That's exactly what he has. He goes chain like two Temple, chain like three Imperm. I don't Cosmic the Temple because um, I'm afraid of Gildrain. And I'm afraid of letting him live, period, to be able to top deck one of the many cards that kills me. Yeah. Uh, so I decide to hold the Cosmic for his remaining back row uh, because I thought I had enough pushing power in my hand. Um, so I summon Dia Bellstar. That, well, I activate Bonfire to see if he has an Ash Blossom in hand. He doesn't, so I just search a Snake Eye Ash. Yeah. Uh, I summon Dia Bellstar. That gets mortared. Or uh, before I summon the Dia Bellstar, I, cro- I Cosmic his cross out, which he feigned call Talents. Which made me a bit wary of something he had in his hand, but it was what it was at this point. Um, yeah. I, I didn't have any non-engine, so I wouldn't have been able to have any defensive cards for his turn. Um, so I, I felt like I had to make a push. I summoned the D-Bell Star. I made, like, I ran over his cards. I made a Hita. Uh, Hita take. I, I summoned my own Flamberge. I linked it away. I made a play, but then I got in a beard, unfortunately. And that was that was the end of my run. But mm-hmm. I, I feel like game three against Cam Neal, I had to choose between playing around like a skill drain or another powerful back row the nib in hand or like letting him live and draw like a powerful top deck that i couldn't stop because i didn't have any defensive cards yeah so uh, i i i chose to play around the the cards he didn't have so it it happens but i i, I don't regret the plays i made against him i was gonna say like do you feel like that was like your only misplay the entire weekend or um against there were there were some minor things that i i'm far from perfect there were many things that did wrong um Game one against Wins, he came pretty close to breaking my uh, my board. Mm-hmm. And I realized that in my combo, I was like holding the Flamberge for no reason. But like, I, I never Flamberged something to the back row during my first turn play. So I had nothing off Temple. So I actually left myself with really low follow up against him. And I was really worried I screwed myself over. Uh, thankfully, I didn't, but like, that was a missed sequence. Um, there were a few things I could have done differently here and there, but overall, I was pretty happy with the way i played especially going second in the the mirror matches i played yeah no that's actually what really that's really good that's really uh in, insightful the, for at least this past weekend you didn't misplay so much or like it lost you a game it was just minor things here or there but at the end of the day like i feel like your deck building made up for your misplays i appreciate it. uh regular regular snake guy, snake guy is just good <laughs> <to me. laughs> So, I mean, th- there were a lot of deck choice building choices I was happy with. Like, the droplet was an MVP. Uh, I-, I think it did work out. I went a little over 40. Um, the-, the lightning storms in the like side deck and the curry cars were really strong. And like, the food show got me a game. So, like, uh, there were cars that all added together. So, yeah. You wouldn't like change the list at all, would you? Um, like, obviously, at the end of the day, I got savaged by Nibiru against Snake Eyes, but it's not like it would have been good if I had a Nibiru against him that game. Um, so, I don't know. Like, uh, you do have, like, a few cards in the side deck that could have been, like, tailored more to Snake Eyes, which was most of Top Cut. Yeah. Um, but I was, like, pretty happy with the list. Ultimately, if I ran some cards, I wouldn't have seen others, right? Uh, it, it was kind of bizarre how good Bell was for me in testing, but then I didn't see it once during the actual tournament. Yeah. I still like that card a lot. Um. I was pretty happy with my choices. Like, even if I ran other cards, who's to say I, I would have seen them or then would have seen other cards I need here. Right. Uh, so. Like, seeing as to, like, Nib was your downfall, like, at the end of the day, do you feel like you missed Nib just for the cross-out target, or do you feel like it wasn't even worth it at that point? I didn't have the cross on my hand anyway, right? So... <laughs> True. Um, so that's the thing. I guess, um, I guess that is a point. Uh, during testing for a while, I was running the one Nib to go with the cross-outs. Um, but then I ultimately decided that um, for most games, especially when I'm going first, because cross out gets side out going second a lot anyway, mm-hmm. um, you use cross out to prevent the hand traps to stop you from getting going in the first place. And then you just fl- you just deal with the nib by naturally respecting it in the way you do your combos and sequence your plays anyway. Like you always leave flambers on board so you can't. You be careful with your tempo. You try to like Celine early and still leave the original. Um, so the general idea was to cross out the hand traps you can't play around and play around the Nibiru when you can. So I didn't miss the one copy. That's fair. That's fair. That's that's really fair. Uh, lastly, the most important part of this video, shout outs, name them. Of course. So um, 
I love all the boys. I wouldn't be here without all y'all. Um, shout outs to the Attic. Shout out to the Fellowship. T- shout out to all OTS at Joe's. Uh, part of the game, Dragon Stack, best locals, Western New York, Yu Gi Oh! Love everyone I play with. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, shout out to Dalen. You, thank you for having this time and believing in me. Uh, everyone I tested with, everyone who believed in me, Nick, who I built the deck with, Colin, Devin, Johnny, John, Partho, everyone I tested with and worked with. Um, Connor, whose curry car is borrowing. Everyone who's rooting me on, super strong in the event. Um, truly, like, the best locals to play in. Everyone knows who they are. I love y'all. I, I wouldn't be playing without y'all. I, I've I've been playing with all y'all for years and years. Watch your successes. Uh, I can't believe I finally got to this point. I, I wouldn't be here without the sport and cheering my, my friends. I really, really wouldn't. Uh, love OTS at Joe's, man. All part of the game. Love all the homies. Love all Western New York, best Yu Gi Oh community, and uh, hope to be still be playing here for many years to come. Still, you know, right? Really, is the the Buffalo really is the best uh, competitive community ever. The uh, best, <laughs> and then uh, of course Vinny and like Steve and everyone who got to day two with me. Yeah, I mean, all the boys love to see him doing well. Again, well, like I said before, and like I've been saying this past weekend, I feel like for you personally, this was like a well deserved top for you. Like you was. It's been a long time coming for you to get this top. You've been playing this game for way too long and have nothing to show. Too long. Let me out. (laughs) (laughs) But nah, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of... I I love watching you grow as a player. I love watching everything you do from, like, your meta uh, hot takes to, like, your, like, rogue Cosmo hot takes. Like, you... you, That's dark. Okay. (laughs) But nah, you really did your thing this past weekend, and I'm really proud of you, bro. Thank you so much, bro. I love you. I, I appreciate all the support uh, from you. And uh, we, we got to all go up to the next event and still show that, uh, you know, Buffalo ain't no joke. Oh, no, we're taking over Niagara. Yes, sir. Back here right we're, we're taking over Niagara. Thanks, Daniel. Much love, man. I appreciate <laughs> getting to talk with you. But nah, yeah, that Sorry, be... my voice has also kind of been going. I've been doing a lot of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! this weekend. Yeah, you have. But nah, with that being said uh thank you for watching the video thank you for watching the discussion thank you for hearing it if you stayed this long uh if you like what you see like comment do all the yugi tuber stuff yugi tubers ask you to do and uh, subscribe smash that bell top 16 static content please and uh yeah. yeah that being said i'm out peace peace